in a world overrun with cheap counterfeit knockoffs. You need to know, are you the next victim? Well, let me drop my phony movie trailer announcer's voice and put on my best airline captain's voice to welcome you aboard the channel today. Thanks for watching. In the warehouse and on the bench today, we have my latest project that may or may not help you determine if you are the victim of a cheap rebranded battery knockoff or if your batteries are just plain worn out. Uh, this is my battery ESR tester, and it's probably one of the easiest projects you'll ever build next to that curve tra tracer that I posted a while back. And before we get into the build, I just want to give you a brief tutorial on what ESR is and uh, why is it so important uh, in testing batteries. ESR means equivalent series resistance, and every battery that you may have has some kind of uh, series resistance in it. Uh, if you were to, let's say, test a battery with, that's just open uh, terminals, no load on it whatsoever, uh, you're probably going to get a pretty good reading of uh, its advertised voltage. Uh, in this case, uh, let me just put this battery up here and we'll set it here and we'll adjust this to zero. This is the way this meter works and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But uh, we'll hit the test button here and we'll notice that it has uh, over four ohms of equivalent series resistance. Now, uh, the reason that's important is as a battery ages, it starts to, to develop a uh, resistance inside. And when that becomes uh, as great as uh, probably over four ohms or more, depending on the load, uh, it's going to cause issues. Uh, the battery is not going to charge very well. It'll sometimes charge very rapidly, but also discharge very rapidly. And in the case of a battery pack where you have, let's say, oh, 10 or more of uh, these uh, 18650 batteries, uh, you're going to have a, a quite a large equivalent series resistance if each one of them has, uh, say, four or five ohms of resistance inside of it. And 20 ohm or 20 times four, that's... Uh, uh, what is that, uh, 80? Yeah, 80 ohms of uh, resistance, which uh, when you hit the trigger on your uh, battery pack, let's say that's uh, connected to your electric drill, and you hit the trigger on that drill, uh, it's not going to run very fast, and uh, it's not going to perform like it did when it was new. So uh, this is a great project to measure equivalent series resistance, and it uh, I've designed it to work on uh, anything from AAA batteries, as you see here, uh, on up to uh, 9 volt rechargeables like this EBL battery. Now, uh, it will also work with uh, standard alkaline, but not as well because alkalines don't quite put out the current that a uh, rechargeable battery will. Uh, for instance, uh, let me show you this one. We'll uh, just put it up. This is a brand new battery, by the way. And we'll just zero this out. And then we'll hit the test button, which puts a 10 ohm load on this battery. And you can see it's kind of going up into the bad area already. Uh, it's, it's not really, really terrible, but uh, uh, that's just the way these are. So this is not necessarily a, a a bad battery. It is brand new. Uh, let me try this uh, 9 volt here that's been used quite a bit. We'll zero it out and when we hit the test button you can see it falls way off and it continues to fall so it kind of gives you a, a indication of its life even though it uh, on an open voltmeter, it may read uh, 9 volts, but uh, under load, it sure doesn't. And uh, now if you get a brand new battery, like, uh, let's say, the ones in this. Uh, I just got these today, by the way, and I haven't even charged them up. So uh, let's just uh, pick one here and see what it does. 
We'll readjust our zero point, our set point. And when we put a 10 ohm load on it, needle doesn't even move as you can see there it doesn't move at all so it has a very very low probably in the million low milliohms uh, esr on it so if you ever want to build a battery pack on your own this meter will help you uh, kind of balance out the batteries you use in that pack you can pick whichever ones uh, let's say they all have between one and two ohms of ESR, you can uh, just pick the ones that uh, match each other, and uh, that'll help you out on that. And uh, in a minute, I'll give you some more uh, helpful tips on this, but uh, uh, let's take a look at the uh, schematic on this. Uh, now that we have the uh, uh, schematic up here to where you can see it a little better, uh, right here is our battery under test, and these are the two terminals on top of my uh, uh, device box there and as you can see it's it's very simple uh, the only thing it has in it is a meter a set potentiometer of 50k which I chose to kind of match this uh, 200 microamp full-scale meter and you can use any kind of meter uh, as long as it's around 200 microamps or even lower would be better uh, and over here is the test switch, and that uh, what that does is it throws a, a 10 ohm, 5-watt uh, resistor right across the battery terminals here. So it loads it down pretty good. And uh, that's about all there is to this schematic. There isn't a whole lot to it. Uh, you just adjust the VR1 here to zero the meter on the set and uh, hit the load test switch. And... Uh, not a whole lot to it. Uh, the only thing I want to uh, really caution you about is uh, on the wiring from the battery terminal onto the load switch, you want to use a, a fairly heavy wire because even, even a small gauge like, let's say, a number 18 or number 16 wire uh, has a, a considerable resistance in it, uh, even for a short length. So. Uh, uh, I'll show you what I did on mine is inside, let me just pop this open here. You can see I used some pretty heavy wire on it. And uh, like this one here, I think it's like uh, at least number 12, could be even as low as number 10. But uh, just a little length of wire makes a lot of difference on the reading on this. So. Uh, Use heavy wire on it. That's that's the only uh, caution I have for you on this. Uh, the resistor, uh, I I would go with around a five watt or greater because it will get hot, especially on if you're testing a nine volt battery. Uh, it'll get pretty warm. So, uh, but the reason I put a smaller one in there is uh, I don't I don't plan on leaving the test button down very long, just long enough to get the reading. So it doesn't get all that hot. And the, the terminal I put here on the top for the battery is uh, just a couple of uh, old vacuum tube type terminal strips here. And uh, I picked one that will match a 9 volt battery real easy. And uh, also when you want to uh, just put another battery on it and just hold it with your finger and drop it right down here like this. So you don't have to fiddle around with different sizes of uh, uh, battery holders. And it works quite well. You can uh, use any kind of project box you want to put it in with some, so long as it uh, fits and uh, you can keep the wiring as short as possible. Now the meter I'm using, of course, isn't the original uh, one I started with. I, I replaced the uh, uh, meter face here with uh, something I drew up in a program called Meter. And the one I used was Meter Basic, so it didn't have a whole lot to it, but it was free. And uh, I tweaked it by using a 
program called Affinity Designer, which is very much like Photoshop uh, Designer, a vector-based graphic thing. But the way it started out was uh, this meter was originally a CRT tester, and it had a full scale of 200 microamps, which worked out really well for this project. So what I did was I, in the meter program, I built a scale of this that was reversed from 10 to 0. Of course, most meters go to 0 to 10, but in this case, uh, the way this circuit is set up, I wanted to do a uh, 10 to 0. So when you set your original voltage, your initial voltage for the battery, you put it, you set it at zero, and then when you apply a load to it, of course, it will uh, read less voltage, and then you can calculate uh, using a uh, any one of a number of uh, internet calculators to calculate ESR in a battery. But I didn't want to go through all that trouble, so I, what I did was I created this meter face, and then after that, I, I made some measurements, and I took several batteries, and uh, the worst of the lot was right here. And when I tested it, it came out as 4.9 ohms. And so I just marked on this scale here where 4.9 ohms should be. And then I tested another battery at 4.03 ohms, and then another one at 0.974 ohms, and then uh, on way down to 0.184 ohms, which is 184 milliohms. So I've got these readings, and if, if you don't want to go to all the trouble of making a graph, you could just take your, your meter and, and mark on a scale here uh, where these calculations come out, and that'll save you a lot of trouble. But... I wanted to make this nice and pretty, so what I did was in the meter program, I developed a scale that came out looking like this with the ohms actually going from 0 on up to 16. So I had to abandon the 0 to 10 ohm scale and go with 0 to 16. And then everything that I tested since then fell right in where it should be on the graduations here. And then after that, I added the bad, questionable, and good scale, uh, according to my preferences of what a good battery is. And then once I did that, we put it inside the meter, and that was a little bit of a difficult part. And I'll show you how I got this meter apart here. And uh, getting it apart was good, but I ran into a little problem I'll tell you about here in a second. But uh, these just, the meter face just pries open right here. And then you lift the top and bottom. so and then there's just two screws that hold this uh, plate on now I originally wanted to glue this to the back of this plate and, and just put it in like that it would have made a made a nice stiff plate for it but as you but uh, as I found out the hard part was there was very little if no clearance uh, between the pointer itself right here and the paper scale and it would catch on it and, and no matter what I did if I just blew on the needle it would stick like that and, and so what I ended up doing is just printing it out on a, a piece of uh, cardstock and putting it in here and that made it uh, just enough clearance to where the needle would swing normally and there wouldn't be any problem with that. And since the meter here also, uh, when you get it back together, 
snaps in there. It, it holds the paper down just fine. And so now the needle will swing all the way to the zero mark and not hang up on the paper. And so that's how I did that. Now, uh, if you use another kind of meter, uh, you'll probably have a little bit better luck of, of clearance. And uh, you can do it the same way. Just uh, take the uh, scale off and glue your new scale to the back and then use it that way. And there's just two screws that hold that in there. Uh, if it's an older meter style, say uh, like the one I have, let me just point the camera up to it. Or this one down here, this would be a good one. This one right here. Uh, these meters come apart a little bit easier. There's uh, usually three screws in the barrel of the uh, magnet part of the meter, and then you can just pull it apart. And the scale itself is usually held on by a couple of screws or something like that. And so doing that is a whole lot, uh, probably a little easier than, than working with a, a newer plastic model. But I like this meter because it's going to fit well inside this case that I made for it. And uh, the back will clear the depth of the case. You can see there. And I like the scale. It had a nice broad scale to it. So uh, I went with uh, with this style, style meter. And the uh, full scale reading of 200 microamps or uh, Yes, 200 microamps worked out really well too. And I'll explain that uh, in the schematic, which is uh, incredibly simple. Uh, this would be the hardest part of it. As I said, if you don't want to go to all that trouble, just uh, take your uh, meter scale and, and mark on there where your calculations would be. And uh, you, you won't have to mess with the programming and printing off and things like that. Well, that's my uh, ESR meter for you to enjoy. If you want to build it, it'll be a good addition to your workbench and uh, something you can use a long, long time. I want to do thank you again for watching and uh, all the links to the good stuffs down below for the uh, calculations for ESR and uh, other things will be in the description. So uh, once again, appreciate you watching.